Welcome back to the workshop, guys. So one of the fundamental skills we need to know in blacksmithing is how to forge tapers, like this little square one or that little round one. So that's what we're going to be covering today. Right, so what I've done, guys, in order to show you how to do this is cut myself a piece of 16 square. This is roughly five inches long. And I'm going to put a center mark on there, two inches. And then I'm going to draw that little piece out. So with my rule, I'm going to take some chalk, just put a mark on there. So I put a mark on my piece of steel at two inches, and I can come in. Nice big center punch mark that I can see when it's hot. I can spin that round, grab it with my tongs, stick it in the fire. Okay, I want this bar nice and hot. I want a nice bright yellow, almost a white heat. If I'm sparking on the end, I'm too hot. But we want this nice and hot. And there's no harm at all in taking your piece of work out of the fire, having a look to see what colour it is, and getting it back in there. So, onto my anvil. Bring my hammer down at a slight angle, and lifting my bar up off the anvil as well. That way I'm pinching my stock. Down into a nice sharp taper. Now realistically, I only need to work on two faces because the anvil is doing the other half of the work for me. But it doesn't matter if you try and work all four, won't make any odds whatsoever. And there we have it. There's a short, sharp, square taper. Sure, I could refine that, but for one heat, that's not too bad at all. Now, I put that center punch mark on there at two inches. So what I want to actually do now is show you how to stretch and elongate a taper. So instead of working on the tip here, I'm going to start hammering further back, and I'm going to work that bar longer. So I'm going to be hammering up here and work down towards my point. OK, back out the forge. And I'm working higher up this time. And then I want to work down towards my point. I'm trying to maintain a consistent angle of both my bar in my tongs and of my hammer. Now, where's that center punch mark gone? There it is, it's not further up. So I'm going to take another heat again and I'm going to bring that hammer even further up the bar and run it down to the tip. There we go. Okay, back onto the anvil. There's my mark, it's further up here. So I want to run down that. Now what I don't want to do is overwork the center and create a hollow. So heavier blows higher up where it's thicker. And then lighter blows where that bar is thinner. I've lost my center punch mark now. Which side was on that side? Um, to keep your anvil nice and clean, we don't want to be hammering any of that cold scale into our work and spoiling our surface finish. And there we go guys, there's a square taper on the end of my 16 mil square bar. Now I know you say, well Will, that's not the most exciting thing you've ever forged in your life. And it isn't, you're right. But it's a fundamental skill that we all need to learn when we're beginning blacksmithing. And uh, it's really important to, to get those fundamentals before trying to run ahead and forge things like axes or hammers, all that stuff. Because if you can't forge a basic square taper, you're gonna do a horrendous job of forging something more complex. So that was our square taper. I think that took three, maybe four heats tops. There's very little to it. So I'm going to show you how to do a round taper. And there's a little bit more going on in that. But I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to mark my bar up at two inches so that I've got a clear point to begin with. And we'll put a big center punch mark in that. We'll 
I'll chuck it in the forge. <coughs> Sorry, my bar's nice and hot. Ooh, a little bit too hot, perhaps. Nah, it's all good. Now, same process of making a round taper as making a square. As blacksmiths, we can't just turn the bar and hope to get there. We have to go square, then to octagon, and then from octagon to hexadecagon. It's a round. All right, so there's my square point. Let's forge it a little longer. Now, the only tools I'm using for this are a pair of 16 mil hollow bit tongs. And I think this is a two and a half pound cross beam hammer. I forged a few years ago. And there we are. That's the same square taper that I forged in the last section, but I forged that in just one heat. So they're nice and simple, nice and easy. Um, it's one of those pieces that you want to be doing when you're starting out. You know, that was only forged at five inches of bar. And if you haven't got loads of pairs of tongs, you can just forge it on, on a longer piece of steel, hold it with your fingers. There's not much kit needed for this. Hammer and an anvil. That's all you really need to be getting started. And it doesn't have to be a fancy hammer or a fancy anvil. Okay, so I'm not going as hot this time. I brought this up to a nice bright orange, really bright orange, with the corners facing upwards. Working down to the tip. All the way back up. Down that side. And what I'm doing is I'm forging that square bar into an octagon. As such, what I want is eight sides that are all equal, equally wide. There we go. So I've been left with an octagonal taper there. Okay, so my bar's nice and hot again. I'm just going to take one more heat. Just to find that octagonal section. And there we go. So there's my octagonal taper. That's halfway between square and round. What I want to do next is forge those corners off. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put this one to one side and I'm going to forge another one from scratch into the round taper. That way I can show you at the end the, the transitional steps. So I've forged my next bar all the way up to octagon. Uh, what I've got to do next then is take those corners off. So I'm going to turn it from the 45, 22 degrees more, so that I can go from an octagon to a hexadecagon. From there, I can then take off any remaining corners uh, and then round it up fully. All right, so we're back up to octagon. Now, I'm a little bit warm actually. Uh, all right, turn it 22 degrees, as I said, and we'll take those corners off. All the way from where my center punch mark is, all the way down to the tip. Once I've done one facet or corner, I need to rotate it, do the next one. Now I'm hunched over like this because I'm trying to get uh, a good look at these angles, making sure I'm actually hitting these, uh, these corners off. Remember to keep that angle nice and clean. Now it's been a long time since I did this by hand. Normally I'd use the power hammer. And the principle is exactly the same. So if I was going to be doing this process using the power hammer, I'd need to know how to do it by hand first. 
Um, I've had a lot of guys come on forging classes with me and gone, oh, but you know, I've seen it on YouTube and you, you make one of those using a power hammer. And you're like, yeah, but do you now do it by hand first? Because um, power hammer is actually a really dangerous bit of kit. You know, you get an angle wrong and you're going to end up really hurting yourself. You know, uh, I ended up with a broken wrist and I know what I'm doing. Um, and that was using a hydraulic press. So, um, you know, it's really important that you understand the fundamental and basic skills first before jumping on and trying to use machinery. Um, so I'm forging it all the way down into a black heat because once I get to this stage, I can really see where those little marks are. I can see if I've got any little corners left over. Um, I can also hit that bar nice and hard without leaving great big marks and indents in it. And I can refine that surface finish. Now the other thing you can do if you really want to be um, fussy with your round section is I could stick it in a vise and I could run a, a rasp over it and actually file it while it's hot uh, and you can really refine that surface finish. But I don't need to, that's not what we're showing today. Um, so I'm, I've pretty much finished forging that section so I'll give this a wire brush and then uh, I'll show you the difference. So there we go guys, we've gone from a square bar, we've forged a square taper, we've forged an octagonal taper, we've got the round taper as well, and I did all of that with just one hammer and one pair of tongs. So I hope you guys found that informative, remember to click like and subscribe, hit that notification tab as well, and we'll see you here again at Phoenix Forge. Cheers guys!